been a decade since Democrats held a competitive primary in CD1, and in 2018 it looks like they'll be making up for lost time. Six declared candidates are in the race, all of them with either compelling backstories, impressive service records, or time in elected office. But the one seen as the early front runner is Executive Counselor Chris Pappas, and he joins us here this morning. Counselor, thanks. thanks Good for morning, being here. Adam. Good to be with you. So uh, it, it's a big district, and you've covered some of it with uh, your Executive Council district there too. But uh, for those who don't know who Executive Counselor Chris Pappas is, how are you introducing yourself uh, to voters right now? Thanks. Um, it's good to be here, and I don't like those labels, by the way, that that people like to put on me in terms of um, what the race looks like at this point, because I feel like I'm just getting out there as a candidate. There are a lot of folks that I have to meet. I have to hear from and so I'm working hard to earn every vote. I represent about a third of the congressional district in my executive council district um, so there are a lot of people that I know. I'm a lifelong Manchester resident. I'm a small business owner um, here in the city of Manchester um, and I have a profile on the executive council where I've been involved in a number of key issues um, and fights at the state house and so I'm taking that experience as a community person, as a, a policymaker, as an elected official and getting out there and connecting with people. Um, people are very eager to see something constructive happen happen. They're looking for positive action uh, from their member of Congress. And I hope to take what's going on in Washington, um, to take that to the voters, to talk about how we can move in a different direction and shake things up. And certainly the political climate right now harkens back to 2006 when Congresswoman Carol Shea Porter first sort of uh, came out of nowhere and upended a race. Uh, and this race could be similar in that you have a lot of people and, and a lot of voices involved. Are you looking to tap into the populist energy that's out there right now or, or uh, run more of a middle of the road kind of campaign? Sure. I I think there are a number of people that are stepping forward to run, which is an exciting thing because I think it shows that um, people are looking to get engaged in the process and want to have their voices heard. We saw this in the local elections that happened across the state um, here in Manchester where a new mayor was elected um, and in other cities. And so I think voters are stepping forward um, and they're wanting to look for positive change in their communities. And I think that's where you can have the most impact. Um, it's when you understand local issues. Um, it's when you can connect people to their government and make them feel better about the process and about our democracy. And so I hope to be able to restore people's faith in our system. Um, but there's a lot of change that has to happen in Washington. Look, it's not serving the needs of middle class families. Um, if you look at the tax debate, for instance, um, that um, tax bill is slanting the system even more in favor of big corporations, special interests, and the wealthy. And so I think that doesn't align with where people of New Hampshire are. So I'm going to be working hard and speaking on those issues. And uh, I hope it connects with folks. What would tax reform look like if a business owner like Chris Pappas was writing it? Sure. I mean, I think that we've got to make sure that businesses are investing here in this country, not shipping jobs overseas. And I think we have to make sure that there's relief for middle class families. Look, in, in this tax bill, 27 percent of folks would see a tax increase over the next 10 years. And in addition to that, two thirds of the benefit goes to corporations. I think those are misplaced priorities. I think Congress needs to go back to the drawing board and do something that's going to support um, the needs of the people of the state. What are some steps that Congress can take to try to minimize or halt this uh, scourge of mass shootings that we're seeing in the, in, the, in the states? This is tragic, and it's so sad that this has become the new normal in our country, and I'm not willing to accept it. I think we need action, and I think we need bipartisan action on this. A poll just came out today that showed that 95% of folks in this country support universal background checks. That's a great place to start. And I think, you know, with the recent shooting in Texas, um, you saw a breakdown of that system, and so we do need to invest resources and make sure we get the data into the system that can prevent um, you know people that want to do harm from getting these weapons and um, carrying out acts like this but I think there are common sense steps that we can take that are universally supported by people in New Hampshire whether they be Republicans or Democrats whether they be gun owners or not and I think we have to move forward on that and we can't accept um, the type of tragedies that we've been seeing as the new normal uh, we've got to work to save lives and keep our communities safe and the knock on Democrats is often that they don't understand firearms in some way. Do you own guns at all? I don't, but look, we have a culture of responsible gun ownership in New Hampshire, and I certainly support that. Members of my family uh, certainly um, you know, hunt and own weapons, and that's great. And I think that um, responsible gun owners know, um, and they're part of these surveys, um, and they do support universal background checks and common sense steps. Look, there's no reason we need bump stocks. 
um, and Congress needs to act to make sure that um, you know we can reduce um, the severity of some of these incidents that are happening and maybe prevent some of them from happening altogether. On the healthcare front, uh, you're a business owner and you have dozens of employees. Would you support a transition eventually, uh, as Senator Bernie Sanders does, to a, a Medicare for all type system? Sure. Well, I do believe that healthcare should be a fundamental right and not a privilege. And that's why, as a business owner, long before the Affordable Care Act came along, um, we thought it was important to make sure we invest in our employees and make sure that they have health care and the economic security for their families that comes along with that. And a number of businesses feel that way. And I think the Affordable Care Act has helped advance that debate. Um, we've seen millions of more people covered. We've seen better health outcomes. Um, it's been a better situation for the entire system in terms of where people access care. Um, so I think we've got to continue to take steps forward on that front. And I think that, you know, to paraphrase Hubert Humphrey, the moral test of our society is how we take care of one another. Um, it's how we take care of the most frail and the most vulnerable in our society. And so I do want to take further steps to make sure that um, people do have coverage um, and that it's good coverage coverage um, that actually will um, provide for them in their time of need. And um, I think that um, primarily right now the front is and the focus should be on protecting people's coverage, making sure it's affordable, um, and taking the steps we can to push back against the sabotage effort from the Trump administration um, who's trying to take away coverage from 22 million Americans. You mentioned the Trump administration there. There's a policy discussion and then when you get out on the campaign trail, a lot of Democrats are going to want to talk about resistance. How do you plan to oppose President Trump? Sure. I think you've got to call him out uh, when he's wrong and when he's doing things that um, run contrary to what the people of New Hampshire want to see or what's best for middle class families. So I'm, I'm eager to get out there and have that debate uh, with this administration with, and with the Republicans in Congress that have towed the line for this president. Um, there sh certainly should be issues and areas where um, you can work together. And I think infrastructure is one of those areas. Uh, we've been waiting a long time to see what the proposal is uh, from this Congress and from this president on infrastructure. And I think the people of New Hampshire are eager to see that. Um, on the Executive Council, we write the state's 10-year transportation plan. And we're going through that process right now. Um, it's been a nice collaborative effort. We've gotten really incredible feedback um, from communities around the state about how we invest in our roads and bridges and about how we bring about passenger rail for instance, uh, which is one thing that I um, strongly support. What we have found in that process, though, is that New Hampshire gets shortchanged in terms of federal resources that come back here to invest in our transportation infrastructure. We get the least amount of any state, less than Delaware, less than Rhode Island, um, in terms of federal funds for transportation. And so I think that formula has to change. And we also have to work to reauthorize the FAST Act so that there's some predictability in the out years of our transportation plan um, so that we can plan effectively and know how to make those investments. Um, that has a, a direct impact on public safety and also a direct impact on economic development. Steering back towards the president a little bit here, one of his campaign managers in 2016 has been indicted on several charges, including conspiracy against the United States. Is that a campaign issue for you? It is something that's going to come up in the campaign and that I'm happy to talk about because I think it goes to um, the very foundation of our democracy and the confidence that people have in the electoral process. I think it is a shame that we see evidence of collusion. Um, and it's very scary, I think, for the future of this country. So we need to make sure that there's integrity and independence in this investigation, that it goes forward, that it puts all the facts on the table, and we'll see what happens. But um, as you peel the layers of this onion, it becomes clearer and clearer um, that um, there were steps being taken by the campaign um, and by the folks around the president um, to work with foreign powers um, to influence and subvert our electoral process. Um, that is un-American, and um, we've got to make sure that uh, we prevent that from ever happening again. And it's certainly a potential end game that, uh, that a Congress that convenes in 2019 might have to consider impeachment. Is that a, a waste of time, do you think, a, a political exercise that just divides the country, or is that something you've seriously been thinking about that you might have to consider? That would be a solemn responsibility if you are a member of the House of Representatives, um, but I think you need to get all the evidence out on the table before for you can really make a responsible call on that. And so I'll be monitoring that situation. Any other issues beyond infrastructure where you see yourself reaching across the aisle and working with Republicans? Well, I think the top issue that people of New Hampshire are talking about is the opioid crisis. It's something that I've been working on at the state level. It's something that I see each and every day in my hometown of Manchester. I have employees that have been very directly impacted by this. They've lost children. They've lost siblings. Um, it is tearing apart families. It's tearing apart communities. And we've got to continue to take aggressive steps to confront 
confront this. We've seen a number of really great efforts at the grassroots and community level here in New Hampshire. Um, we have the state Safe Stations program, which has gotten off the ground, which is a model um, for um, you know how to handle this around the country. But we've we haven't had the community supports um, in place uh, when we were hit with this crisis to be able to um, make sure people get well and get the services that they need. So we do need further investment. And I think that um, the proven strategies that we have on the ground here in New Hampshire need to be matched with the full weight of the federal government in terms of the resources that can be leveraged. So I've, 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 I'm excited that um, our delegation is arguing for uh, further dollars for New Hampshire. I think we've been shortchanged when it comes to the formulas. Um, this is, we are seeing um, you know, this crisis deeper than any other state in the country. Um, we are seeing an overdose death rate, um, you know, second only to West Virginia. And so I think the formula should reflect that. Uh, the resources should reflect that. I think we know how to um, work and take care of people here in our state. Um, and we've worked hard to destigmatize this issue. Um, and there needs to be further action. If elected, you'd be New Hampshire's first openly gay congressman. Is this something that you're going to discuss on the campaign trail? Or is this in, in the Kennedy-esque sense, it's sort of a, a parallel track? to the, the policy issues. Yeah, it, it's a, a central part of who I am, and I'm excited to talk about it anytime someone wants to bring it up. Um, and, you know, I think it's exciting in New Hampshire that we have an all-female federal delegation. Uh, we have four trailblazers who have broken down barriers for women to enter politics. And so I think some people are looking at my candidacy as um, in that same vein, um, breaking down barriers and making sure people feel included in the life of their community. And that's an exciting thought for me that people are looking at it that way. All right. Executive Counselor Chris Pappas, of course, the uh, secret weapon, probably the uh, Puritan chicken fingers that will be deployed later in the campaign. We'll, we'll be guessing. taking those on the road, that's All for right. sure. Councilor, thank you for your time. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you.